Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington. The conflict or potential conflict between the United States, Israel, and Iran seems to be heating up. First, Iran has naval exercises and threatens to close the Straits of Hormuz in retaliation for tougher sanctions on Iran. Then, an Iranian scientist is assassinated in what can only be called an act of terrorism. Most people are speculating, by, I mean most pundits and analysts are speculating that this is an act by Israeli Mossad or American intelligence agencies or both. And then war games planned between the United States and Israel. Major war games called, get this, Austere Challenge 12 is the name of the drill. Well, now all of a sudden they've been canceled, we're told, because they don't want to heat up or intensify the conflict with Iran. It's all beginning to sound like an episode of the American TV show 24, except there's a real tragedy here, the assassination of the Iranian scientist and the, his young family who lost a husband and a father. Now joining us to talk about all of this is Gareth Porter. Gareth is an investigative journalist and often contributor to the Real News Network. Thanks for joining us, Gareth. Hello again, Paul. All right, so I guess make some sense of all this. I guess let's pick up the start, start the story with the uh, assassination of the Iranian scientist, and then I guess we get to the cancellation of the war games. Well, the, the assassination program uh, in, in Iran has been going on now for uh, a few years. And what is uh, really very clear about this, first of all, is that the Israelis uh, uh, conceived the idea they're the ones who have been carrying it out. Um, the Israelis had the idea, uh, they sold the idea as somehow slowing down the Iranian nuclear program by hitting the nuclear scientists. But in fact, uh, it's become quite clear that what they're doing here is not really slowing down the program because they're not uh, really killing dozens and dozens of scientists. They're killing a very few uh, uh, scientists, and they're doing so uh, in a way that suggests that what they really want to do is provoke Iranian ire uh, at the United States uh, in particular. But listen, and Gareth, try Gareth, to spark, Gareth before, yeah. before we get into that, just back up a step. How do we know it's clear this is Mossad, uh, Israeli? We, we know Iran has accused Israel, United States, and Britain of being involved in this. Uh, how, do you, how do we know this is, is Israeli? Well, there, there has been a, uh, a series of uh, reports here that really uh, nail this down in, in the last several days. Uh, Eli Lake uh, reported for the Daily Beast uh, a few days ago that uh, Mossad agents were uh, bragging, actually, uh, at the margins of a recent, uh, what they call a strategic uh, dialogue between the United States and Israel, which took place in December. Uh, saying, you know, talking about, uh, you know, how it's not a good idea for someone to be associated with the uh, uh, Iranian nuclear program these days. Um, and then there is a, uh, just today, the, the Telegraph um, had a, uh, a long story that um, made it clear that there was uh, evidence that this was uh, Mossad. There, there doesn't seem to be any question about that. I guess I, could, I guess I could add to that, la the last time an Iranian scientist, nuclear scientist, was killed, I, I guess a year ago, uh, a man by the name of Masoud Ali Mohammadi, uh, Yossi Melman, who is uh, one of the most respected national security uh, journalists in Israel and uh, writes for Har Haaretz, he said this could only be uh, either Israeli or American that time, and I guess the same logic applies this time. Yes, and of course, uh, then, then I think we have the American response to this uh, latest assassination uh, in Tehran, which was uh, that both the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, and the spokesperson for the National Security Council issued uh, really unprecedented uh, denials, uh, very vehement denials of U.S. involvement in this assassination or any other assassination uh, in Iran. Uh, they had previously not uh, gone to that length to make clear the United States is not involved in this program. But uh, it, it seems now that the Obama administration has uh, concluded that uh, Israel's strategy is indeed 
one of primarily trying to uh, raise tensions between the United States and Iran with the intention of hoping that there will be a, an incident that will spark off um, escalated violence and, and ultimately a war between the United States and Iran. Well, the, so la the last time we talked uh, about this, not just last week, it was after Leon Panetta, the Secretary of Defense, and we kind of had spoken a, a, on a television show, Face the Nation, and we parsed his speech. And one of his answers when asked what would the United States do if Israel attacked Iran on its own, uh, he was very specific, saying we would defend our forces, not we would defend Israel. And you and I talked about the implications of this. And I guess if you put that together with the possibility of thousands of American troops being in Israel during this exercise, they would be a hell of a target if, if Israel did launch such a strike. And then the next thing we know is they cancel the game. So what do you make of that? I'm not that cancel the games, the war games, I should say. Yeah, this is, this is an extremely important development. Uh, because the U.S. military has been building um, year after year closer and closer uh, cooperative relationships with the Israeli military ever since 2001, in fact, uh, the United States and Israel have been staging uh, war games uh, every other year. And these are major exercises involving hundreds to thousands of U.S. troops and a similar number of Israeli troops. And this new uh, uh, war game or, or military exercise, which was scheduled for April, was going to be bigger than any of the previous ones. And more important, it was going to focus on the integration of U.S. radar, uh, highly powerful radar uh, operations with the Israeli anti-missile systems, particularly the Aero, uh, the new Aero system, the Iron Dome system. And so to, to be able to uh, detect at an early, uh, the earliest possible stage and to shoot down incoming missiles was the purpose of the game. And it was clear that this was aimed at uh, a scenario in which Israel had already gone to war with Iran and they were going to be shooting down uh, Iranian missiles uh, retaliating against uh, Israel. So of course, they'd also be concerned about missiles coming they assume from Hezbollah, because Hezbollah has bragged about being able to target any particular building in Israel that they want. So this issue of missile defense is, right. is rather important for Israel. It would be both Hezbollah and Iranian missiles, you're correct. Uh, so, so these uh, war games, as you say, called Astir Challenge 12, are really much more important than any previous one, precisely because of the signal that they would send to the Iranians uh, that the United States is, in fact, a full partner with uh, Israel in the scenario of a war between Israel and Iran, which clearly would only begin with a strike uh, against nuclear facilities uh, by the Israelis. So what's the, what's the signal of canceling them, then? Well, the signal that, that is now being sent, it seems, uh, to me at least, and I think... Uh, where, you know, Jim Loeb and I are doing a piece uh, on this this evening, to be published this evening, uh, the, the signal that's being sent is that the United States now realizes that it is jeopardizing uh, the uh, peace and stability of the region by sending this kind of a signal by, uh, on one hand, uh, entering into a major uh, military exercise involving uh, a scenario of, of Israeli a war with Iran at the same time that the Netanyahu government in Israel continues to hold out, uh, refuse to agree that it will co cooperate with the United States and uh, uh, give the United States uh, a prior warning or prior, uh, uh, prior information about any plan uh, to attack Iran. Uh, and of course, uh, the importance of that is that that, that means that the United States would have a harder time or would not be able to exercise a veto over uh, an Israeli attack, which in the past uh, it was understood the United States would be able to do that. So on one hand, the United States, uh, in the scenario of, of participating in this game, would be seen as a full partner while at the same time the Israelis were threatening an attack unilaterally and dragging the United States along with them. So have and we, have we I, I heard think, from the Republican Party at all yet on this? I mean, is this going to now be Obama abandoning Israel and the rhetoric as, uh, as such? Well, I think it's very possible that that could be a, a theme that you would hear from uh, 
uh, particularly Newt Gingrich, who is extremely close to uh, Netanyahu, uh, who shares a, uh, uh, an American uh, neocon Jewish uh, uh, big money bags uh, figure with Netanyahu, uh, Sheldon Ab Abelson, and uh, who, who is obviously somebody who is ready to pick up the most extreme uh, pro-Israeli uh, and anti-Obama theme. So yes, that's quite possible that we'll hear that. But uh, I, I think what is important here is that the, the Obama administration has understood the danger that it has put itself in by this degree of military cooperation in the absence of getting the uh, Netanyahu administration to uh, agree that it will no longer uh, threaten to carry out unilateral action against Iran. Mm. Well, I guess we'll see uh, how this all unfolds. Uh, in our previous well, By the way, yeah, I, th I think one more point j just along this line is that the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, Army General Martin Dempsey is on his way to uh, Israel this week. Uh, he, I understand that he arrives on Thursday, and I have no doubt that part of what he's going to be doing uh, during his stay in Israel is to say to the leadership of the Israeli military that you have a choice. If you want the United States to participate in any such uh, military exercise in the future at all, the uh, Netanyahu government is going to have to commit itself to collaborating, to cooperating with the United States in, in uh, uh, informing it way ahead of time that it is thinking about an attack on Iran. That is, of course, what the Netanyahu government does not want to do because it knows that it will then be subject to a political veto by the U.S. government. But that, I think, is the implication of, of this decision, despite the fact that, by the way, both sides have uh, apparently used the cover story that this was a mutual decision based on uh, the desire of both sides not to uh, heat up uh, the tensions uh, with Iran. Well, I guess if you're sitting in President Obama's chair looking at the, uh, on the edge of the unraveling of Europe and, and, and perhaps triggering another global financial meltdown, if you were to add to that an attack on Iran the, and the closing of the Straits of Hormuz and the price of oil going through the roof, that would almost be a perfect storm, if, assuming you're trying to get reelected in 2012. Well, absolutely right. I mean, that is a, a big part of the uh, picture here. And, and actually, I think that it is one of the uh, developments here alongside the, uh, the, the latest assassination uh, by the Israeli uh, Mossad in, in Iran. I think it was the Netanyahu government's uh, force, a successful forcing of this new uh, sanctions uh, uh, policy, that is, uh, sanctioning the crude uh, oil sector of, of uh, Iran, the exports of crude oil from Iran to Europe and Asia, and uh, sanctioning the central bank of, of Iran, which the uh, Obama administration was dead set against in November, uh, but was forced by uh, the uh, Congress, acting on the, uh, pressure, under pressure from the Israeli lobby, uh, to pass legislation to basically force the issue, uh, the Obama administration had to go along with that. But, but clearly, it was not happy with that. And I think that that was part of the reason that Obama has come around uh, to the conclusion that it's really time uh, to push back against Netanyahu. Thanks for joining us, Gary. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.